Hello, everybody. My name is Hildegard Bühning, and I'm the current president of the European Society for Cell and Gene Therapy. ESGCT is a nonprofit organization for education and science dedicated to fundamental and clinical research in the areas of gene therapy, cell therapy, and genetic vaccines. And today we are very proud because we launched our e-seminar. And this e-seminar lecture series is always on emerging topics. And as you know, a topic that is of utmost interest currently is SARS-CoV-2. And today, our first speaker, we are uh, looking forward to Professor Jin. He's from uh, University of Hong Kong, and he did his PhD in BJ, and then went to the NIH before going back to Hong Kong. And uh, he, he is an expert in innate immunity of viruses and host virus interaction. And that is a very, very important topic when it comes to South coronavirus. And today he will share with us his current insight on the origin of SARS CoV 2. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Bunning. Thank you for have, having me here uh, to give this talk on the, the current insights on the origins of SARS coronavirus 2. So, in this talk, I'll uh, briefly talk about the genome structure and replication of, uh, of uh, SARS coronavirus 2 and also uh, briefly about the disease and then the zoonotic origin of human coronaviruses. And uh, I will also uh, focus a little bit on why bags serve as an excellent host, reservoir host for the different uh, human coronaviruses. And then uh, the interesting question about whether pangolin serve as the intermediate host of sars cov 2 and what are the implications of studying the origins of uh, sars cov 2 to antiviral and vaccine development? And then uh, we'll come to the uh, questions. So this is actually the sequence of events uh, about the SARS CoV-2 and COVID-19. It's just like yesterday. I still remember uh, uh, having the news of uh, the discovery of the new coronavirus around the Chinese New Year. And then uh, because we're in Hong Kong, uh, we are very, very uh, vigilant. And, 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 and then uh, uh, in the first, uh, First uh, 20 days of January, we are very busy uh, uh, responding to uh, these, um, the, the, the new cases uh, in, 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 in Shenzhen. And then uh, actually they, uh, in China, they are also uh, uh, focusing on this and then uh, uh, isolate the uh, new virus uh, in, on January the 7th and then uh, after uh, we, we make the request again and again on uh, January 12th, uh, the viral sequence, genome sequence of the viral, virus uh, was released and shared with everybody, which is actually one of the critical steps uh, in the uh, control of, uh, of this pandemic. And later on, uh, the city was locked down. Uh, actually, there is a very critical time, which is uh, January the 10th, uh, from January 18 to 20th, uh, the Chinese authority, they make a, 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 a very big change. And then uh, on January 23rd, uh, they locked down Wuhan. And then uh, uh, later on WHO, uh, after a lot of pressure from all the countries, uh, they declare uh, uh, this a, 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 a uh, public event of international concern. And then uh, on March uh, they, uh, 11th, they declared this an, a pandemic. So this is uh, the sars cov 2 variant and the genome structure. And uh, the spy protein, which is on the surface, and then the membrane protein, nucleic capsid protein, and this is actually the genome, the genome structure. 
Uh, on the five pine end is the uh, ORF one AB, which is the replicates, case, uh, and they will be cleaved uh, by the uh, protease, the viral and host protease into uh, sixteen uh, non-structural proteins, and uh, on the uh, three pine end. Uh, these are the structural proteins together with some of the lineage specific accessory proteins. These accessory proteins, they are thought to be non-essential for replication, most of them, but they might play an important role on host, uh, on the interaction with uh, host immune in, in immunity uh, and also the antiviral response. So these are the uh, genome structure of the, uh, I'm sorry that the, my keyboard is uh, too sensitive uh, tonight. And these, this is the genome structure of coronaviruses. Uh, we are comparing the uh, group A, B, C, and D. And as you might notice that actually uh, many of these uh, human and animal coronaviruses are actually discovered by my colleagues in the University of Hong Kong. Uh, we have this uh, uh, HKU1, uh, which is the first um, uh, 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 human coronaviruses, actually the second uh, uh, human coronaviruses discovered by my colleagues. And then uh, they also look for many of uh, the uh, 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 group C and group D. Uh, uh, back coronaviruses, and they discovered HKU9, which is actually uh, at that time most closely related to MERS coronavirus. And actually, when they discover uh, HKU9, they already predict that uh, these might have the potential to infect humans. Uh, that was uh, actually in 2005, 6, and then uh, in 2012 the discovery of MERS coronavirus uh, in Middle East confirmed their prediction that uh, these back coronaviruses actually can actually infect human. And uh, the SARS coronavirus was also uh, identified by uh, my colleagues, Professor Malik Pierres and Professor uh, K.Y. Yun. Uh, actually, that is actually in the year of 2003. In China, initially, they claim uh, chlamydia to be the cause of the atypical pneumonia. Uh, and then there are other findings uh, uh, blaming uh, metanumal uh, virus as the cause, but actually it is uh, SARS coronavirus, a new uh, coronavirus discovered. Uh, and that was actually uh, from 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 the patients uh, directly, uh, they they uh, I mean two patients uh, who came from Guangzhou in two thousand three, and this slide actually briefly summarized the replication cycle of uh, human coronaviruses. And for example, if this is uh, SARS coronavirus two, uh, the uh, cellular receptor is the ACE two. And then after uh, uh, enter the cells and encoding, the, the RNA genome is released, and then uh, uh, replication and, 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 and transcription take place. And the mRNAs are these subgenomic uh, mRNAs, and they uh, will, will, will uh, then produce uh, the proteins that will later assemble into the virion and then uh, but from the cell uh, to release the virus. So uh, currently there are several uh, antivirals and these are actually uh, some of the uh, broad spectrum antivirals, for example, the ribovirin that is actually uh, inhibiting the capping of mRNA. And then Taiwan interferon is the uh, host uh, cytokine that have antiviral uh, activity. And the protease inhibitors uh, that have been used for HIV. And then uh, uh, 
irandesivir, which is actually newly shown to be effective, uh, which the target is actually the replicase and also the proof, uh, proof reading enzyme, which is the NSP14 exoribonuclease. So uh, by understanding the steps of the life cycle, we can actually uh, try to develop more new antivirus, just like uh, in the case of HIV. And this one, this slide summarized uh, uh, the seven human coronaviruses. Uh, as I already mentioned, there are four community acquired human coronaviruses, uh, 229E and OC43, which, is, uh, which are initially found. And then after the outbreak of SARS, in Lesserland, uh, our friend uh, find the NL63, uh, Professor Ben Burkow and also others, they have uh, discovered this. And my colleagues in the University of Hong Kong, they discover HKU1. And all these four viruses, they are well adapted in human and they just cause a mild disease uh, uh, typical common cold. And they don't need an animal reservoir. And they are highly transmissible within humans. And in contrast, SARS coronavirus and MERS coronaviruses, they are much, much more violent and pathogenic. They need animal reservoirs. They are not uh, well adapted in human at least uh, not completely perfectly adapted to human environment. And they cause uh, severe disease uh, with high mortality, 10% uh, for SARS coronavirus and 35 to 40% for MERS coronavirus. And the human to human transmission also it is uh, possible for SARS coronavirus and MERS coronaviruses, it could not be sustained. So there is no sustainable human to human transmission for SARS coronavirus and MERS coronaviruses. And so after uh, they have, prem I think they have uh, stopped uh, the wild animal markets in China, uh, SARS coronavirus uh, did not come back after 2004. Uh, 2003, 2004. However, for MERS coronavirus, uh, later it was discovered that uh, the, the geometry camels, they serve as the intermediate and also the natural reservoir of MERS coronavirus. And uh, they, uh, the virus uh, then spread to human uh, almost yearly since uh, 2012. So in my opinion, SARS coronavirus 2 is actually between these two group of uh, human coronaviruses. Uh, the four community acquire human coronaviruses. Uh, they are highly adapted to human, highly transmissible, and the more violent of uh, SARS and MERS, but between these two is the SARS coronavirus 2 is kind of intermediate. So uh, it's almost as highly transmissible as the other community uh, uh, coronaviruses, much more than SARS and MERS. And however, they are also more pathogenic than 229E and HKU1. So that's uh, uh, how I see it is something between these two groups. And this one actually compare uh, the, the uh, genomic structure of the seven uh, human coronaviruses. Uh, so for SARS and SARS coronavirus 2, OC43, HKU1 and MERS, they, are, they belong to beta coronaviruses of group B. And uh, alpha coronaviruses of group A uh, there are 229E and, auto, and also NL63. And uh, if we compare 
the clinical features and transmissibility, transmission patterns of the uh, human coronaviruses, they are actually very similar with a similar incubation period and also the transmission mainly through a respiratory uh, droplets and for mice. And uh, my also fecal, fecal oral or fecal uh, 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 respiratory is uh, also uh, another possibility. And uh, the clinical symptoms actually in 80% of the COVID-19 cases, they are indistinguishable uh, with uh, the four community uh, human coronaviruses. And the human coronaviruses, the four uh, community acquired ones, they display some seasonality, which uh, uh, it remains to be seen whether uh, COVID-19 and SARS-CoV-2 might also display uh, seasonality, which is actually more prevalent in winter. So talking about the COVID-19, I want to mention this, uh, this uh, very important contribution by my colleague, uh, Professor uh, uh, K.Y. Yun, and also Dr. Jesper Chen. And as I said, uh, in, the early, in, in early January, so the first patient was actually admitted to our hospital in Shenzhen. So also we are in Hong Kong. Uh, we actually, a few years back, um, we actually set up a hospital in Shenzhen, uh, which is owned by our university and uh, 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 also run uh, by our uni university in a very Western format. So that's actually very important factor uh, in, this, uh, in this outbreak. So actually before, so when our Chinese uh, colleagues are still uh, debating whether uh, this SARS-CoV-2 uh, would actually uh, be able to, to, to transmit between human to human, uh, our group, this, um, the uh, Professor Yun's group, uh, my colleague, they have already obtained the far first hard evidence for human-human transmission. And they actually, by studying this family cluster, they have demonstrated the main uh, clinical and transmission features of uh, SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. And these include high transmissibility with a very high attack rate within the family, 83. Uh, six out of seven members in Shenzhen got infected. And if you trace back to their relatives uh, in Wuhan, it's um, altogether 83% got infected. And the relatively low pathogenicity, generally mild and to moderate uh, uh, presentations. And also they have uh, shown, uh, they have uh, seen diarrhea in some patients. And more importantly, uh, for the first time, they have demonstrated asymptomatic virus shedding because there is one, so in these, uh, in these uh, 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 seven members, there is one trial, uh, seven year old, and then another trial, 10 year old. The 10 year old uh, boy, uh, he has no symptom uh, throughout the whole uh, uh, clinical course, but uh, he was positive, he was found positive for, 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 for viral RNA. And also uh, some weak uh, 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 symptoms in the lung, but there is no uh, obvious uh, 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 symptoms. So this pioneering work was led by Professor K.Y. Yun, uh, with also Dr. Jasper Chen, who is the attending physician, together with many scientists. It's actually a very good combination of clinician and scientists who have this done quickly within a week to demonstrate to China, to Shenzhen, to Guangdong province, to the Chinese government, and then to the world that this is a highly violent, a highly transmissible 
virus and uh, can be transmitted from human to human at a very, very high efficiency, they make a difference. They present their findings to the Chinese authority. Also, uh, initially, they actually have got some pressures from the Chinese side and some of the uh, some of the uh, group members, they, they even uh, at some point, they have the fear that whether they could ever come back to China. But uh, they, 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 they stay on and then they make these, uh, these discovery and then they uh, also publish at the end of January in Lancet. And these really make a big difference in China. So uh, this is what I described as the critical evidence that convinced the Chinese authority to change their, their attitude towards uh, this uh, pandemic. And later on, uh, I also collaborated with colleagues uh, in China to show this, to go one step further to show that the asymptomatic carrier, they actually uh, have the potential to transmit the virus to family members. So uh, the, there, are, there are several families and uh, mostly from the, uh, the, the college students who are studying in Wuhan, they uh, came back to their hometown and then they spread the virus to their family members. So this is the first demonstration of this uh, presumed asymptomatic uh, transmission of, um, of SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. So now, uh, after this uh, brief introduction of the virus and the disease, uh, I switch gear to talk about the uh, zoonotic origins. And as shown here, all the seven, all seven uh, human coronaviruses, uh, from an evolutionary point of view, bags are the reservoir host for many, at least for five human coronaviruses. And the um, mice and, 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 and rats are some of the, uh, I mean, the rodents might be uh, the reservoir for two uh, human coronavirus, OC43 and HKU1. And uh, in many cases, particularly in the case of MERS coronaviruses, it was uh, well documented that there is a definite intermediate host, in this case, the dromedary camel. The dromedary camel, they got the virus uh, presumably from bags, but uh, this is actually a typical example that an intermediate host turned into a reservoir host. So uh, importantly, uh, in the bags, these five coronaviruses, or in the uh, rats and mice, these two coronaviruses, in the reservoir host, they are non-pathogenic. But in the intermediate host, for example, in the case of SARS coronavirus, in the intermediate host of, uh, of civet cats, uh, which I will uh, uh, give more information on, on, on the findings later. Uh, for SARS, these civet cats, the SARS coronaviruses are actually pathogenic in these animals. Actually, not only civet cat, but several other types of animal. But in camels, the symptoms are generally very mild. So camel is actually one example uh, in which an intermediate host turn into kind of a reservoir host and then spawn the virus to human uh, year in, year out. And uh, in the case of 229E, uh, whether it is similar to camel or maybe to these, um, these uh, uh, another, another uh, 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 the, 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 the alpaca, which is actually uh, similar to camel, 
that's still to be de determined. Some scientists believe that it might be directly from bags, and some believe that geometry and albuca might be the intermediate host. And in the case of OC43 and HK01, rats and mice would be the reservoir host. Importantly, the OC43, uh, it's spread to cows or maybe also pigs. And then from cows, uh, it jumped from cow to human. And there is actually one important event uh, which is actually around 1890. So one belief is that whenever uh, these, these uh, uh, coronaviruses, when they uh, undergo cross species transmission from animals to human, uh, or they have these species jumping, uh, to human, there might be a potential to cause pandemic, just like uh, uh, COVID-19. And one evidence in support of this idea is actually this uh, pandemic around 1890, uh, known as uh, Asiatic flu or Russian flu initially, and uh, previously thought to be caused by H2N2 influenza and queued uh, 1 million. And uh, there are some molecular clock, clock analysis and other uh, evidence suggesting that the jumping of OC43, the OC43 from cows and human, they are very similar. The jumping of OC43 related virus from cows to human occurs at around 1890. And that actually coincides with this uh, pandemic, which killed 1 million. So that is to say that uh, when, when some of these, uh, I mean, in this group of, uh, of uh, uh, community acquired uh, human coronaviruses, uh, these four uh, com uh, uh, a common cold causing uh, coronaviruses, NL4063, 229E, uh, and OC43 and HKU1, when they initially cross species to infect humans, just like uh, in the case of OC43, they might also cause a pandemic. That's actually one important idea. I mean, we can never prove that, but this is... Uh, uh, probably in the history. And uh, to summarize uh, what we discussed, the bags are the evolutionary reservoir, and then the geometry camels are the intermediate and also reservoir host of MERS coronavirus. And the civet cats, and actually also several other animals they might be the intermediate and amplifying host of sars cov viruses too. So why I say that? Because civet cats, uh, the infection of civet cats with sars cov virus is actually pathogenic and probably also other animals. And it is uh, impossible, almost impossible to find sars cov virus in uh, natural or farm-raised civet cats. But only in the civet cats and other mammals sold at the wild animal market uh, at that particular moment. So that's why uh, many of us believe that the civet cats and these other animals, they serve as the intermediate or maybe transient host, amplifying host that spread the virus to human, but they might not be the rest of our host because uh, we can't find virus in the natural uh, civet cats or the even the farm-raised uh, civet cats. 
So in the case of SARS coronavirus 2, uh, my friend uh, Professor Si Zheng Li and uh, Zhou Peng from uh, Wuhan Institute of Virology, uh, very quickly they have identified uh, the back uh, uh, coronavirus that is most closely related to SARS coronavirus 2. So this is actually the, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. This is uh, my, my keyboard is too sensitive and it is uh, it's just uh, very quick. And uh, so there are two, two groups, actually two groups of uh, viruses that are closely related to SARS-CoV-2. Uh, the first are the bad coronaviruses. The most closely related one is the RATG13 uh, from a, a, a horseshoe, uh, an intermediate uh, horseshoe bag. Uh, that shares 96% uh, identity with SARS-CoV-2. And then the pangolin viruses, there are a group of them, uh, two has been identified and one isolate. This group of pangolin viruses, they share 90, approximately 90% homology genome-wide with SARS-CoV-2. And uh, the methods to study this origin of uh, SARS-CoV-2 is by next generation sequencing, metagenomics, and also virus isolation and also most importantly by serology. And uh, serology uh, with the availability of the antibody uh, detection reagents, serology is now being performed and they serve as important evidence. So uh, the, the, the uh, back virus, the back uh, coronavirus are close, most closely related to uh, SARS-CoV-2 was uh, identified by uh, Zheng Li Si and Peng Zhou. And uh, Zheng Li also played an important role uh, in chasing uh, SARS coronavirus back to, 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 uh, to Bex. And together with uh, uh, Professor Yun and, 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 and his colleagues, uh, there are two independent groups uh, showing that. And, 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 and and then uh, my colleague, Professor Guan Yi and Dr. Tommy Lam, they, uh, they, they identified these uh, SARS coronavirus related coronaviruses in the Malayan pangolins. They are being smuggled into China. And importantly, these are dying pangolins, meaning that probably the virus is highly pathogenic. Uh, they were found to, 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 to have a severe disease and then uh, queue and then frozen uh, by the customs. And uh, Professor Guan Yi uh, talked to them and, 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 and found the virus in their frozen samples. And then other groups, they also uh, uh, found the virus, uh, two or three different groups. They actually found the virus uh, in other pangolins. And uh, one thing to know is that the Cantonese people, particularly in Southern China, uh, some people, they like to consume pangolins. Uh, they, they thought that the uh, pangolin meat may have anti-cancer uh, 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 feature. And also, uh, they like to consume these, uh, these uh, uh, pangolin meats. So there is a demand there. So that's why uh, the pangolins are smuggled into China. So this is the spy protein of uh, sars cov two, the one that binds to ACE2. And there are uh, important features to, to, to know and if we compare sars cov two with the bad virus, RATG3, 
also genome-wide, they share the highest identity of 70, uh, of 96 percent. Uh, the, 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 the RBD is more divergent. So whether this is due to, 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 to uh, uh, the laws of this um, these, uh, sequence, that's uh, still not known. But for pangolin uh, 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 coronaviruses, also they share only 90% uh, identity genome Y with SARS coronavirus 2. They are more similar in the receptor binding region. So they share 97% homology instead of only 70 something between the bag and human viruses. So that's uh, uh, two important uh, 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 details to know. And then the third important detail to know is that uh, if we compare sars cov 2 with the bag and pangolin viruses, we know that there are these, uh, these insects. Initially, some Indian scientists, they believe that this is actually from HIV, which is actually uh, baseless because if you search this uh, sequence in the database, uh, uh, you will got many hits. Not only, uh, I mean, you actually, you will not get HIV. You got maybe malaria, maybe other virus, other, uh, uh, other uh, things. So it is unlikely derived from HIV. But where does this insert come from is still a big question. It is not from the bag virus and neither from the pangolin virus. So one hypothesis is that these incest might be obtained from a third virus that are the parental uh, viruses of SARS-CoV-2. So this is actually just one hypothesis. And most uh, interesting, most interestingly, if we pass on these SARS-CoV-2 in human culture cells, for example, VOE6, as done by my colleague, Professor Hong Ning Chen, these inserts will be lost. And then he further determined that these uh, insert lost strains, they are attenuated. So I will talk a little bit more about that later. So to summarize, uh, if we compare SARS-CoV-2 to SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV, uh, SARS-CoV virus, it shared uh, 96, 95% with the back ancestral virus. And there is a almost identical virus being found in civet cats. And the civet parental virus shared uh, almost 100%, it's 99.8 or 0.9% homology identity with, uh, with SARS coronavirus. And if we compare to MERS coronavirus, there is a bad ancestral virus sharing 80% identity, but the camel parental virus is 100% identical to uh, MERS coronavirus. So then is that dilemma in the zoonotic origin of SARS-CoV-2 uh, because the RATG13 back coronavirus, the, uh, we call it ancestral virus, share 96% uh, homology or identity genome-wide, but uh, only 75% identity within the receptor binding domain. Whereas the pangolin ancestral virus shared 90% genome wide, but 97% uh, within the receptor binding region. So uh, there could be many hypotheses, as I explained uh, in the next slide, to explain uh, the relationship between uh, the human, bat, and pangolin viruses. But uh, if we do some bioinformatic analysis, uh, molecular clock, clock analysis, and it is predicted that the divergence of the bat virus, uh, I mean, the divergence of the human virus from the bat 
RTTG 13, it takes almost uh, 50 years to do this. And the divergence of, of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 from SARS-CoV, uh, that is even longer, uh, maybe centuries ago. So there are many hypotheses to explain uh, the relationship as uh, described here. There might be scenario one, the bag, uh, pass on the virus to pangolin and then to human. And it could be multiple events from the pangolin, several different pangolin to human, or maybe the bag pass on the virus to pangolin and also to human. Uh, so the viruses that are most closely related to human SARS-CoV-2 in animals are still to be discovered. So uh, using different methods, uh, the, 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 the SARS-CoV-2, uh, this human virus might be uh, phylogenetically uh, clustering with the bat virus or maybe with the pangolin virus. Uh, it depends on uh, which part we use or which method we use uh, for the, for the uh, uh, phylogenetic clustering. But still, uh, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't, uh, 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 we, 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 we can't uh, 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 neg neglect uh, that sars cov virus to share the highest uh, homology was uh, the bad virus uh, genome-wide. So uh, whether these, uh, the, some, some animal virus that might be uh, almost identical to the human viruses might be found in bats, pangolins, or other, or a certain source, or other several sources of animals that still uh, to be discovered, to be uh, clarified. And uh, the most important thing is to look for those, uh, whether it's uh, from bags, from pangolins, or from other animals, these are all possible. There might be uh, parental viruses uh, uh, that, that can be found in pangolins, or bags, or a certain animal, and whether uh, these parental viruses are pathogenic in pangolins, that's also an important issue. And as I pointed out earlier, uh, from these uh, initial uh, uh, reports, the pangolins capture are severely, uh, 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 are having severe diseases, uh, severe respiratory diseases. So, what animals could be infected by SARS-CoV-2 naturally and experimentally, that's also an important issue. So concerning the origin of COVID-19, initially, Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market in, in, in the city of Wuhan was uh, thought to be one of the locale where animal to human transmission occurred. So uh, evidence in support of that also still not published. Uh, but uh, 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 we, 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 we did see some evidence. Uh, these include virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, I mean the viral RNA can be amplified uh, in samples uh, collected from the gloves, the door handles, and also the chopping boards, uh, the boards uh, on which animals were killed. However, it is not yet found in any animals captured uh, in that particular market or in other markets in Wuhan. Uh, it could be due to many reasons because uh, not everybody has uh, are, are that capable to isolate the virus uh, from the animals. And also, uh, the first group of confirmed cases are linked uh, to this Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market, but 
there are also confirmed cases linked to other wild animal markets in Wuhan. Uh, even some of the uh, uh, confirmed cases in Hong Kong, two of them initially uh, actually can be uh, traced back to other wild animal markets in Wuhan. So uh, whether patient zero uh, is um, actually uh, uh, will be uh, in, in, uh, initially uh, found in November or December 2019, uh, there are no clear cut uh, evidence. There are no concrete evidence uh, indicated one way or one direction or the other. However, there are quite strong evidence in support of substantial undocumented infection uh, in Wuhan and elsewhere. Also in Wuhan, they might not uh, want to, 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 to recognize that, but uh, it is the same everywhere that substantial undocumented infection uh, do occur there. But whether it is late from the Wuhan Institute of Virology or the Wuhan CDC, so this is actually the Wuhan wholesale market. Uh, these are the uh, people selling these white animals uh, uh, before the outbreak. And this is the Wuhan Institute of uh, Virology of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. And this is the Wuhan CDC. And the claim that uh, the virus could be leaked from Wuhan Institute is that uh, scientists there, they are particularly Professor Zheng Li's group, they are studying back coronaviruses. And the claim directed to Wuhan CDC is due to the fact that uh, some, some health professionals there, they are also uh, uh, dealing with back coronaviruses. They capture back coronaviruses to investigate uh, the, the, I mean, to do some surveillance work uh, by metagenomics. However, I need to, I, I, I must emphasize again and again, there is no evidence, not any evidence that the virus uh, could be made or leaked from either Wuhan Institute of Virology or Wuhan CDC. As I said, Professor Xi is a man with uh, highest integrity and, 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 and as her friend, I, 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 I do not believe that the virus could be made by her or could be leaked from her lab because uh, their lab actually uh, are doing all experiments uh, up to the highest international ethical standard and biosafety standard. That's uh, what I believe. It's even, uh, I mean, their P3 lab is very, they, they, they are not even allowed to work with uh, many different viruses in the P3 lab. That's uh, what I uh, know. So concerning the issue of substantial undocumented infection, uh, there are several uh, uh, studies. For example, uh, this German study in, in Gangau, they call this uh, uh, German Wuhan. Uh, it is due to a, 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 a big event uh, 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 or and, and uh, in which there might be a super spreading uh, occurs uh, during the, that social event uh, there. And uh, they have approximately a, a thousand participants and 2.39% viral RNA positive known, but more, 3.59% detected. That means there are more that are not recognized. And the official number of confirmed cases are 3.1, but the antibody positive is uh, close to, uh, is more than 15%. And among all the cases, 22.2 uh, are asymptomatic. So that's actually an excellent study and 
I hope that will uh, soon be accepted for publication. And then uh, different, different uh, organizations and different uh, people are also checking for RNA and also uh, the uh, antibodies in different places. In New York, uh, they check for the antibody and uh, in New York City, it's around 20% positive and uh, statewide is 12.3%. Uh, uh, many, many more than the uh, uh, diagnosed or confirmed cases. In Spain, 7% uh, in Barcelona, 5% across the country for antibody positive. Uh, but uh, the, the um, uh, confirmed cases are uh, much, much less. And there are also two very controversial or funny studies one is in Los Angeles County in US, in LA, in California, about a thousand participants. The number of confirmed cases are, uh, for antibody positive in April is 4.1 and in May is 2.1. So something could be wrong uh, for this study. Otherwise, uh, 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 it's uh, fairly unlikely that the antibody could just uh, disappear. And the same dilemma also uh, uh, surround uh, the studies uh, 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 conducted in Wuhan. Initially, they have 200,000 people tested uh, and they got 185 viral antibody positive in April. And then they, 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 they aggressively done this on 11 million people, but this time they mix up. They mix up 10 different samples uh, for one RT-PCR and they got like 180 uh, RNA positive. So the sensitivity of the study is a big issue and whether that is actually uh, sufficiently robust that's actually uh, open to criticism. And, but uh, they did this uh, just to, 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 to relieve um, the concern from the uh, general population. But all of these, all of these point to the fact that there are substantial undocumented infection. And it is not surprising that uh, these could also occur in December or even earlier, 2019. And then came the issue of this uh, reverse zoonosis. And uh, well known, it is well known that cats can now can be infected and the cats can also pass on the virus to other cats, uh, whether they could pass on the virus to human theoretically possible, but uh, not, uh, not uh, no any case. The only case is from the furry. And the dogs, uh, uh, in Hong Kong, we have found uh, dogs are uh, infected by, uh, by, by SARS-CoV-2, but the viral titers are uh, not as high as in cats. And, and then uh, in mings, in tiger, uh, in, 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 in hamster furry, hamster is actually used to be the, the animal model. Uh, in addition to the human ACE2 transgenic mice, uh, the hamster serves as a good model uh, in which uh, we, you can see uh, disease similar to, to, to human. And one important issue is uh, whether at some of these animals Dramatic, domestic animals or the pets, they might become the reservoir host of SARS-CoV-2, even if uh, the virus is eradicated from humans, there is still a possibility that it might be in some of the wild animals and also the pets. That's also one risk that we need to bear in mind. And at this point, I want to compare SARS-CoV-2 with HIV because HIV is uh, the best study human viruses. 
uh, human virus. And there are many lessons that we can learn from HIV and AIDS. So I will briefly talk about the origin of a HIV as the human pathogen. Now it is well known that HIV-1 come from chim chimpanzee, from chimps, and then HIV-2 uh, came from SIV, uh, from Su Sugi Mangapi, Suti Mangapi in West of Af Africa. So this is the very uh, 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 simple phylogenetic uh, relationship between the, the monkey virus and the human virus. And if we go deeper, we know that actually HIV-1, HIV-2, there are more than one animal to human transmission events. For example, for HIV-1, there are several, but only group M and group O, they finally got established in human population. And particularly uh, group M, uh, there are many, many uh, uh, millions of people being infected. And group O, there are only a few thousand, hundred thousand. And for N, it's only maybe a dozen. And there are other transmission events uh, that can be uh, detected, but there are maybe only one or two uh, human that are being infected. So that is to say that not every animal to human transmission event will end up with a virus well adapted in human. The same could also be true for SIV uh, transmission to, to, to give rise to HIV-2. Uh, there are multiple events, but only two or three finally give rise to HIV-2. So in the case of HIV, uh, these uh, zoonotic uh, uh, transmission was established based on the similarity in viral genome organization, phylogenetic analysis, prevalence in the natural host, geographic coincidence, and also the possible routes of transmission, including petting and butchering. And so then come back to the human coronaviruses. Why bags serve as a perfect and excellent reservoir of human coronaviruses? So uh, the uh, chasing back uh, SARS coronavirus to bags is due to the effort of two groups. One uh, uh, led by Professor K.Y. Yun, my colleague Professor K.Y. Yun, Professor Patrick Wu and Professor Susanna Lau. And the other is a collaboration between Professor uh, Zheng Li Si and Professor Lin Fa Wang uh, at that time in Australia and now in uh, Duke uh, National University of Singapore in Singapore. And they establish that bats are the reservoirs of human coronaviruses, uh, particularly for SARS coronavirus 2, uh, SARS coronavirus, and also SARS coronavirus 2, MERS coronavirus, and the other several uh, human coronaviruses. And why bats are such a, an excellent reservoir? So bats are the only flying mammals. They have high metabolic rate. They have high temperature. And they are long lived and stay healthy, uh, 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 theoretically much more long lived and healthy than human beings. And importantly, they have a very potent antiviral response. The interferon response, both the interferon production and interferon signaling are activated. On the other hand, uh, because innate in immunity are actually double-edged uh, swords, on one hand, it has antiviral activity, and on the other hand, it has pro-inflammatory uh, effect by activating inflammasome, for example, NLRP3 inflammasome. So that's the two phases of uh, innate immunity. In the case of bags, 
uh, the antiviral response is more potent, is activated, but the inflammatory response is deficient. For example, uh, inflammasome activation, NLRP3 inflammasome particularly is deficient. So that you say that the viruses, uh, the bags can harbor the viruses. Uh, they have a strong antiviral response so that uh, the replication of the virus could be kept under control, but does not cause any symptoms. There is no inflammation because inflammation activation is deficient. And there are a wide variety of hosts and vi uh, viruses. So that offered, uh, that surface the gene pool of uh, the human coronaviruses. And uh, what we understood is that this is due to long time co-evolution uh, between the bags and the coronaviruses. So the coronaviruses, they are highly adapted and they are non-pathogenic. Just like uh, the SIV in chim or in sooty mangabe, or even the uh, influenza in waterfowls. So they are non-pathogenic due to various uh, reasons. So uh, in this uh, recent study of, uh, of my group, we demonstrate that the SARS coronavirus, uh, the ORF3A, uh, can actually activate the NLRP3 in famous zone. This is SARS coronavirus, not SARS coronavirus 2. But uh, this, the same mechanism is, uh, is absent in bags, as shown by Pro Professor Lin Fa Wang, uh, also in this um, uh, study last year. So that's just one example that the uh, information is not induced and infamous zone activation is deficient uh, in the back cells. So that might actually explain uh, the, the presence of asymptomatic carriers in humans. So the important questions surrounding uh, the asymptomatic carriers in human uh, include these, whether the viral loads are high or low, how often can they be found and how often do they shed virus? And whether the transmission from P symptomatic patients and, and, and patients with mild symptoms is actually really significant and whether they have strong and long lived humoral and cellular immunity against virus. And uh, by studying the uh, one infection in bags, we can understand that this is the result of adaptation. And the, uh, there are two possibilities that could uh, explain the presence of asymptomatic carriers. One is a strong antiviral immunity, for example, very strong interferon response, or the antiviral immunity is decoupled as in the case of HIV in, in, in chimps and sooty mangabe, uh, the antiviral T cell response is decoupled. So that to say that the viral replication can, 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 can go to very high levels, but there is no uh, robust T cell response. So these could be the reasons for the asymptomatic carriers, but uh, 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 in the point of view of the control of the pandemic, whether the asymptomatic carriers can shed a lot of virus and infect a lot of people, that's the most important uh, issue. And what we believe is that only some of these uh, asymptomatic carriers, they uh, might do this. And the other issue is whether these asymptomatic air carriers, they could mount a robust uh, antibody response or 
cellular immunity, uh, whether that could also be strong and long live, or whether it is uh, like uh, in the uh, like HIV one in 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 chimps uh, that the T cell response uh, could be defective, and then uh, there would not be a a a a a, a very uh, prolonged uh, humoral or cellular immune response against the virus. That's uh, an important question to be answered with um, uh, many of uh, 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 convalescent people. So one issue concerning the mutation rate of the SARS-CoV-2, uh, we still don't have a very uh, accurate calculation also, uh, if we compare SARS-CoV-2 to SARS-CoV and HIV, uh, we can we can easily find that the interstring difference uh, between different isolates of SARS-CoV-2 is within 200 and 300 nucleotides uh, among 30,000. And uh, these, um, this mutation rate or the evolution rate uh, of SARS-CoV is estimated to be uh, similar or a little bit lower than HIV. However, SARS-CoV-2, this is much, much lower and the interstream difference is within six to 10 or maybe one single digit or maybe uh, less than 20 uh, uh, among 30,000. However, as I pointed out earlier, deletions are, are more noteworthy. Particularly, uh, it has already been, been found that some of the deletions resulted in attenuation. So the possible reasons for the low mutability. So uh, both SARS-CoV-2 and MERS uh, coronavirus, uh, the mutation rate is lower than sars cov and that could be due to adaptation to human or maybe in a, another intermediate host very close uh, to human. And uh, in all these uh, coronaviruses, there is a, a proof reading enzyme uh, that could be inhibited by remdesivir. And this is the S-O-ribonuclease NSP14. So that makes sure that uh, the mutation rate could not go too high. It is not like in HIV or other RNA viruses. But uh, many scientists are still uh, using mutations uh, to chase SARS-CoV-2. And as I said, uh, the mutation rate is relatively lower, but still there are mutations. And that could be used to chase the transmission pattern, the transmission route, origin of cases, patient zero, preference, uh, distribution, and evolutionary pathway. That's very useful uh, to use these point mutations as kind of biomarkers. However, there are still no concrete evidence that these point mutants are phenotypically different in transmissibility or pathogenicity. And more exper experimental analysis is required uh, and the existing results should not be over-interpreted. Uh, there are maybe one or two studies uh, doing very quick comparison uh, in culture cell, but that is still not uh, sufficiently convincing. Uh, currently, just no evidence. And it is widely believed that uh, one vaccine could protect all the different strains, existing strains of uh, SARS-CoV-2. However, some deletion mutants are more noteworthy, particularly those that turn out to be attenuated. And whether there are uh, what could the earliest SARS-CoV infection be found? And where could the patient zero be found? As I said, uh, uh, mainland China, they have developed the, or you can say the best 
uh, disease, infectious disease surveillance system in the world. Uh, theoretically, uh, those in Beijing could, could, could see uh, any patient uh, with, uh, with unknown, I mean, I mean, atypical pneumonia anywhere in China. However, that did not happen. Uh, this time and also last time and also uh, sometime in between. So something is wrong with either the design or the execution, particularly the execution of uh, implementation, the execution of this uh, surveillance system. Otherwise, the patient zero should be identified almost immediately. Not, I mean, because as I said, there are many undocumented, substantial undocumented uh, 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 cases. So patient zero might not be the real patient zero, but still uh, maybe a patient very close to zero could uh, be quickly detected by the surveillance system. However, that system does not work uh, in this outbreak. So then uh, now we could actually do more serological studies. For example, we can, uh, we can check for many of the bank samples, uh, the bank sera that are collected for influenza or for other reasons in different hospitals. And uh, Actually, uh, some of our friends that have already done this in Shanghai, uh, they traced back uh, the samples to last year and they could find nothing. Also in Hong Kong, because uh, we are very vigilant, uh, in December, in late December and early January, we already heightened our surveillance and we checked everybody from Wuhan um, uh, that we, that we uh, 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 that cross the border of uh, 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 to enter Hong Kong, we check every one of them, and initially, uh, all those uh, those uh, who have symptoms, they are actually not SARS-CoV-2, they are influenza, because uh, the 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 outbreak coincides coincide with um, the 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 uh, peak of the seasonal flu initially in Wuhan. So many of them are actually uh, 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 influenza, but not SARS-CoV-2. So that also serves as the uh, one perspective that that uh, there might not be many uh, uh, confirmed cases earlier than November and December 2019. And the infections in Hong Kong and in other cities in China and elsewhere currently, uh, most if not all of them can be traced back to Wuhan. So this is actually a, a study from my colleague Hong Ling Chen, uh, in which they show that the junction sequence uh, uh, between the S1, S2, uh, that is uh, the so-called inset that is found that is not found in either a uh, bag or pangolin uh, 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 viruses closely related to SARS-CoV-2. That uh, sequence could be deleted after several passages passages in viral E6 cells. And in hamster model in cell culture, they have shown that these uh, deletions are attenuated. And there are also several other reports. For example, this uh, ORF7A, the accessory protein, there is uh, 81 nucleotide deletion. And there are also deletions in like ORFA and other parts being uh, seen, uh, uh, not published yet, but um, uh, are being reviewed. So that is to say that deletion might be a, 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 a more noteworthy uh, 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 change in SARS-CoV-2 uh, compared to the point mutations. Also point mutations are also important. So by studying the origins of uh, SARS-CoV-2, it actually will have implications to treatment and also to vaccine development. 
For example, Taiwan interference uh, can be um, uh, used, and also the interleukin-6 uh, receptor inhibitors, this tonsillosumab, and this humanized, uh, human, completely human antibody, and also the treatment with conv uh, convalescent uh, serum, and also uh, that will give us the idea to develop live attenuated vaccine because the best we've seen arguably could be one that is similar to a natural infection that cause no or mild disease. And if we can understand why uh, the coronaviruses are non-pathogenic in the rest of our host and in some of the uh, asymptomatic car human carriers, uh, we might be able to develop a, 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 a life attenuated vaccine so this is uh, uh, a recent study by my uh, colleague Ivan Hong, and they shown, have shown that interferon uh, uh, does have beneficial effect. And also uh, another study from my friend uh, Hai Ming Wei uh, in China, in Hefei, they have shown that uh, the interleukin-6 uh, uh, receptor inhibitor uh, uh, antagonizing antibody, uh, the tonsillosumab. Uh, can be uh, used to treat severe cases of COVID-19. So with that, I, I, will, uh, I will close uh, this, um, this seminar and, and, and then uh, I, will, uh, I will answer any questions that uh, people might have uh, through the live chat or through other means. So thank you very much, Professor Chin. It was a fantastic talk. I learned a lot. And thank you for the very deep insight. And we have received already two questions. And I also encouraged um, the people out there to, to write the questions. And if we later have no, not sufficient time to answer them, please send them to ESGCT office. And we will forward them to you, Professor Chin. So the questions I have received already is one from Hannover Medical School. So uh, Samuel is asking, do you uh, think there might still be more appropriate intermediate host for SARS coronavirus 2 for transmission to humans different from pangolins or bats? So as I said, uh, that's uh, well possible. Uh, other than bags or pangolins, there might be uh, other other uh, wild animals that could 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 do the job. And actually, uh, initially, civet cats are also suspected because civet cats are being sold in the Huanan uh, wild animal wholesale market. And there are also several other other uh, uh, animals, uh, including bamboo rags. However, uh, the initial studies uh, uh, conducted by, by, by our Chinese colleagues, uh, they, 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 they were not able to find virus in these uh, wild animals. Also, uh, as I said, they found the virus in the gloves, in the uh, door handle, and in the uh, chopping boards. Uh, and in the uh, even in the uh, water uh, 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 in, 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 in that market, but they could not find it in the animals. So 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 that's uh, the big question uh, whether uh, there might be a third source. But I believe uh, uh, I mean in the case of MERS coronavirus, uh, it take it took. Uh, uh, scientists are more than a year to 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 come to uh, geometry camels. So in in in, in the case of um, uh, uh, SARS CoV, it, it takes uh, almost a year also to find civet cats. But in this case, uh, it's still early, so it's still possible to find a virus that are very closely related to SARS CoV two in a third source. And there are some some uh, indications that 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 uh, SARS-CoV-2 might have such a 
a more stabilized or natural reservoir somewhere because um, the mutation rate is low. And also it, it appears that it is more, it is better adapted to human already. So, I mean, before sending, uh, asking the next question, so you said that it is more adapted to human already. You said this in the talk or, already. Um, yeah. So how does this happen or has this happened? Do you have any, any clue? So currently we, don't, we have no clue, we have no evidence, but one hypothesis is that it has already uh, been adapted in a kind of reservoir host similar to the case of uh, MERS in dromedary camels. Mm -hmm. So uh, because uh, oh, uh, if we compare the mutation rate, both MERS coronavirus and SARS-CoV-2 both of them are very low, similar, mm -hmm. but SARS coronavirus, the mutation rate is higher. Uh, and SARS coronavirus, uh, the intermediate host is, uh, uh, it is pathogenic in the intermediate host and is kind of, kind of transient, just uh, an amplifying host. And you cannot find uh, the uh, virus in the natural uh, CV cats, but, in the case of uh, uh, MERS, MERS coronavirus, uh, it is uh, commonly found, it is uh, widely found in dromedary camels. And so there is some hints that SARS-CoV-2 might be like the MERS coronavirus that could be found in a third host. Because now we know that actually it could actually easily infect many animals like cats, uh, like uh, hamsters. So whether there might be one which is actually the true reservoir that's still to be determined and is uh, possible, well possible. Thanks. So Sushin Kim from uh, Chunam National University is asking, is it possible that the only inserted sequence in spike of sars coronavirus 2 was derived from an intermediate animal sequence that has not yet been found? Yes, that's also uh, one possibility that it might be the uh, derived from uh, the third uh, virus, not the, the, the currently uh, known to uh, bag and pangolin virus, but from a third one. It could be from bag, it could, um, could be from pangolin or from a third source that we talk about, mm -hmm. but contain this insert. Um, we have a question from the University of Leeds. So George Feistinger is asking, how likely do you estimate the adverse effect of an antibody-dependent enhancement of disease severity after immunization with a novel vaccine? Yes, uh, that's an important issue, but that's also a very complicated uh, 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 issue. And, 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 and ADE, uh, might be uh, uh, a big concern in, in, in vaccine. And actually some scientists and physicians also believe that the severe cases might also be due to ADE because uh, the severe cases all, almost uh, all develop in a later phase and it's all due to immune response. So whether ADE already play a role in severe cases that's an important question to answer, and it's possible. However, whether ADE would be, I mean, you can show ADE by ex, in, in experimental infection. Uh, you can find an antibody, and if the antibody concentration is low, and it is uh, particularly if it is a, a non-neutralizing antibody, uh, in low concentration, then uh, you could see uh, an enhanced infection, an ADE infection uh, does occur uh, in sars cov virus. And so that's also as well possible that might also occur in sars cov virus too. But whether the ADE would be, uh, would, 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 would prevail and dominate uh, when, uh, when, when reinfection or uh, vaccine uh, uh, immunization 
I mean, in the case of uh, 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 reinfection and, 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 and immunization, that's still to be determined. If the neutralizing antibody and the protective immunity, including the protective cellular immunity, is sufficiently strong, even if you have ADE, for example, some people believe that ADE might also occur in influenza, but uh, ADE is not that significant uh, in the use of influenza vaccine or in the um, clinical cause of influenza. So whether ADE does play an important role, it has to be answered in clinical trials. I mean, maybe also in, in, in animal study, in non-human primate, and then uh, in, in clinical study. Otherwise, uh, it would be very difficult to, 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 to uh, conclude. And, and, and in the case of uh, dengue, dengue, ADE is a, a severe uh, problem in dengue, causing uh, uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever and, and other things. And uh, as if we uh, remember that the dengue vaccine, the dengavaxia, the dengavaxia, I mean, it's approved for clinical use. And it has com uh, concluded uh, uh, to be effective and, 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 and safe uh, in all clinical trials. But then only when it come to human use, it was found that 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 it that there could still be some ADE in particular group of people who have a pH thing or, or or have no existing immunity. So that's uh, what is uh, uh, the big debate in, for example, in Philippines. So that uh, whether ADE play an important role could only be answered at a later phase of uh, vaccine development and. Uh, when, for example, uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, come back, comes back. Otherwise, uh, it's uh, hard to, to, to conclude. That's my opinion. So thank you very much. So this was the last question I have here on the screen in front of me. So thanks again for this wonderful talk. Um, and uh, thank you for starting uh, our e-series on SARS-CoV-2 with this uh, wonderful talk. Thank you very much. Thank and you very I would much. Thank, and I would like also to remind everybody that next week we have a further talk, which is given from Daniel Luque. He is from the O'Neill Institute of National and Global Health Law in Washington, D.C. And his talk will be on the COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.